You know, streams are incredibly important. They provide food and shelter for a variety of animals. They also mitigate flood damage, filter pollutants, and provide habitat for a variety of aquatic ecosystems. And more than that, they provide all these beautiful recreational opportunities in the suburbs. Hey kid, do you know what gets Sam and I out of bed every morning? Uh, gee, I don't know, something weird? No, you silly goose. A healthy stream cross-section is what gets me going every day. Here we can see the cross-section of a healthy, undisturbed stream. You can see the channel is stable and intact, and there is a well-vegetated riparian buffer. The riparian buffer is a dense barrier of plants with deep root zones that filter pollutants before they reach the stream. But how do streams get damaged, you might ask? Unfortunately, due to erosion from water flow increase as a result of anthropogenic activity, construction projects, hurricanes, and water treatment plant outflow, the excess discharge will cut away sediment from the stream banks, incising the stream downward. As you can see in this eroded stream cross-section, disgusting, I know, the pollutants that would normally be filtered through the root zone of the riparian buffer in the groundwater now flow directly into the surface water of the stream, creating many hazards for the environment surrounding it and drastically affecting the chemical processes needed in a healthy stream. So why is all this stream damage necessary to restore, you might ask? Well, there's a lot of different pollutants that can harm the stream but we're gonna be focusing on nutrients, specifically nitrate. Check out this process. Here, we have a generalized cross-section of the earth. Let's say that there is a stream system that flows from the mountain to the estuary. Moreover, let's assume somewhere along the way that there is a source of excess nitrate that enters the groundwater. These sources include, but are not limited to, fertilizer, manure, agricultural fields, lawns, and inorganic chemicals. The nitrate seeps into the groundwater and eventually makes its way to an eroded stream where it is able to enter the stream surface water. The stream can carry that nitrate all the way to the coastal estuary where nitrate is the limiting nutrient in the aquatic ecosystem. The excess nitrate can allow for algae to grow exponentially in green sheets called algal blooms. With this develops two big problems for the estuary. Number one, some algal blooms release neurotoxins which are harmful to other aquatic organisms and to humans. Number two, when the vast amount of algae dies, bacteria will move in to decompose the organic material. Unfortunately, these bacteria can use up the majority of available oxygen in the water that aquatic organisms need to live, which can potentially lead to fish kills. If we can restore a stream's ability to act as a barrier to nutrients entering the water column, we move one step closer to developing a safer, sustainable environment. But how do we get to this clean, healthy stream? Let's talk to Captain America about what we need to do to restore the stream. As Sam was saying, there are three main ways to restore streams, and we'll be focusing on the aspect of reducing excess nitrate through the following. Number one, reducing stream bank erosion. Number two, by re reconnecting the floodplain. And number three, facilitating denitrification on the floodplain. So let's look at some of the many strategies that can be put into place to protect stream beds and banks from eroding. One possibility is applying riprap, which are large angular rocks, gabions, which are meshed containers of stone, or interlocking concrete blocks to act as armor against the cutting of fast flowing water. Applying bank protection can slow the effects of erosion caused by excess discharge, allowing the riparian buffer to remain in contact with the nitrate in the groundwater and be able to treat it. When the fast flowing stream cuts past the root zone, the next restoration technique is to cut out the floodplain. In doing so, we will have created a wide region for the water to spill out over and therefore dissipate its energy. This wide region will also be highly vegetated to help slow the flow discharge, thereby increasing its retention time and allowing for denitrification to occur in the root zones of the vegetation. Now let's dive into the mysterious process of denitrification. Let's take a look at this healthy stream cross-section once more. For denitrification to occur, there can be no oxygen. So as the groundwater moves through the root zone, oxygen is used up by the bacteria living there until there is no oxygen left. With the oxygen gone, the next most powerful electron acceptor, nitrate, can now be removed. Anaerobic bacteria that live in the root zone and below stream zone have the ability to complete denitrification. Organic matter such as decomposing roots, leaves, and wood provide an energy source for the denitrifying bacteria, which is why they live where they do. These bacteria convert nitrate to dinitrogen, a gas that makes up over 78% of our atmosphere. As a result, the nitrogen gas escapes to the atmosphere, thus removing nitrate as a pollutant in our stream. 
The bacteria's use of nitrate to respire and release dinitrogen as a waste product is analogous to our own exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide, that old essential survival technique we call breathing. Like I said earlier, stream restorations are extremely important in preserving the environment. They preserve natural pollutant filtration processes, decrease the rate of stream bank erosion, which helps protect nearby infrastructure and property value, and makes for beautiful scenery. That being said, stream restoration projects are incredibly expensive, and they, are, as a result, are a very heated political issue. Not all scientists believe that stream restorations are proven to heal the environment and prefer of the idea of letting Mother Nature take its course. Not only that, but oftentimes stream restorations are completed by companies due to legal obligation. As a result, they will only fix what they are told to, letting some environmental hazards slip through the cracks. But don't be glum. Take pride in the fact that we are doing something to help our planet. 